on the BBC, Nick. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thanks very much. Thank you, Prime Minister. President Macron said this morning that there's no silver bullet when it comes to solving the issue of small boats crossing the channel. He's right, isn't he? Despite all the warm words today, it's going to be very difficult to deliver tangible progress on that. And if I may just quickly on Ukraine, is there anything extra that you as Prime Minister are offering President Zelensky when it comes to weapons or to money, or are you open to it? Well, let me take both of the... Look, the there's no easy silver bullet. If there was, uh, it had been fired a long time ago. Uh, it's difficult, it's hard, it's challenging. Um, but I'm absolutely convinced it's a very serious problem and it requires a very serious response. And that's why we have put to one side the gimmick of Rwanda and are pursuing the serious response, which is to smash the gangs that are running this vile trade. Uh, and I've said it before, but I say it again, I have seen this, I have been in the room when operations have been conducted to take down terrorist gangs, sharing data, intelligence, uh, thinking strategy, including where you're going to prosecute, which has to be the first decision, not the last decision, to take those gangs down. And I'm convinced it can be done. But what happened today, which was really important, because this is the first time that the EB EPC has actually discussed this as a primary issue. And so that's really important. And the consensus, not just at the plenary, but particularly in the workshop, is that the focus needs to be on the gangs uh, if we're going to smash. And that was a really important moment, I think, for us all. Um, there's a high degree of consensus that we need to work in this way. A real interest in working with our border security command. Um, and a sense of how, can we, how quickly we can get on with that. It's not, there are no silver bullets. Nothing is gonna solve this overnight. Um, and as I made clear in my opening plenary, we also have to tackle a problem upstream um, in relation to the drivers of migration, whether that's climate, whether that's poverty, or whether that's conflict. And that's why it's really important that I've set out the money that we've pledged to that here today. But I, I can tell you there was a real consensus that this is the serious response to a serious problem. Thank you, oh, I'm sorry, on Ukraine. Um, just in relation to the capability, um, look, there's no change in position. Uh, there's no new decisions that we've taken as a government that weren't taken by um, the government of two weeks uh, ago. But the support for Ukraine um, is as strong as it was and obviously stronger by having had 46 European leaders here today uh, that's on top of the NATO council we had last week recommitting. Um, and so that commitment is there, but there's no new decision or change of position in relation to the use of the capabilities that we're providing. Thank you, Nick. I'll go to Robert at ITV. Yeah, that's the ITV. Um, Prime Minister, I think I'm going to say something that's a statement of the blooming obvious, uh, which is the... the arms manufacturing and defence capability of Europe and the UK on their own is completely inadequate to support Ukraine without America's help. So if America were to decide to seek a peace treaty of some sort with Putin, there's pretty much nothing we can do about that. And then on um, asylum seekers crossing the channel, unless and until you get these intelligence sharing, policing agreements across Europe, are you simply reconciled to the numbers crossing the channel rising? Um, let me deal, I mean, in relation to the first point, Robert, uh, one of the things that came out of today, and in fact, the discussions we had in Washington last week, was this commitment to an industrial strategy sitting behind the pure capability question for the very reason that you pose, which is the backfill, the capability when it comes to that. So that industrial strategy um, was much discussed last week and that discussion has carried on um, today. I'm not going to preempt what may or may not happen later this year in relation to the election in America, but I can't underscore enough um, the shared commitment here today um, at the EPC hosted by us, the UK, and I'm really proud of the role that we've played in relation to Ukraine. It has been a leading role, um, and that is credit to the last government, which we united with on this and have continued that work. Um, but I'm not going to preempt uh, what may happen in the elections later this year. 
other than to say that industrial strategy, I think, is a very important component of the package that we need to put um, together. In relation to what's happening um, in relation to the channel, no, I'm not uh, resigned to anything. Uh, the work that we can do starts straight away. We've started on the command, but there's other things we can do, sharing our intelligence and data. That's why we've put more resource into Europol already. Um, I, when I was leader of the opposition, went to The Hague to have discussions with Europol to get ahead of this, um, essentially to say, what can we do early on um, to increase capacity to work in a different way with Europol? And of course, uh, we need to get on with the measures that we can do here in this country. And, you know, the tragedy of all this is not just in the numbers that have crossed, but of course, um, the poor souls who have been lost in the last week, one last night, four, I think, uh, in the last seven days or so, which is a reminder of the human cost uh, of the vile trade that these gangs are perpetuating. Um, and that is why we must take them down. Thank you, Robert Beth. Thank you, Prime Minister Beth Rigby, Sky News. Um, Prime Minister, over 550 people have arrived on small boats since you became Prime Minister just two weeks ago. You know this is a hard nut to crack. If the prisons crisis is, in your world, shocking, what is the small boats crisis? And when do you expect to make progress that the public can actually measure you on? And if I may, Donald Trump's running mate, DJ Vance, is a vocal critic of aid to Ukraine. Are you worried about that? And how does it affect your roadmap to spending 2.5% of GDP on defence? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, but I think that's three questions packed into one, two, two. Um, but look, on the, on the numbers and what's happened in relation to small boats crossing, um, we're inheriting a really bad problem here from the government who has not addressed this. Um, nobody is suggesting it's easy. It is a test of government and it was a test of us as uh, the opposition before we came into government. But we've wasted time here. We've wasted resource. We've had a home office that has been dedicated to a gimmick that didn't work. Uh, and therefore, the work that could have been done in relation to border security hasn't been done, in my view, in the way it should have been done. Um, and the proof is in the pudding. We've got record numbers this year. Uh, we can't switch that in 24 hours, in one week, two weeks ago today, we were still knocking on doors asking people to vote for us. We can't turn it around that quickly. But... Uh, the frustration that I have in relation to prisons is, is across this as well, because um, so much time and effort has been spent on Rwanda, a scheme which, in my view, was never going to work, and the proof is that it hasn't worked, when the serious answers have been left unaddressed, which is why I'm pleased now that we're getting on it speed. I'm really pleased that we, um, the Home Secretary made an announcement in relation to the Border Security Command so quickly. And here we are, you know, two weeks, 14 days after we were knocking on doors, hosting the EPC, where the focus is on how we work together with our um, colleagues across Europe um, to do the coordinated work that we need um, to do. So I'm pleased that we're making up ground. We will continue to do it at pace, but we've left it, been left in a really difficult position yet again by this government, which has um, you know, been a dereliction of duty because border control is, is about our national security. Um, and rather than address it with a serious answer, uh, they addressed it with a gimmick. The gimmick didn't work, and we're left with a very serious situation to try and turn around. Uh, and in relation to the situation in um, America, look, we'll have to, I mean, those elections will take place. We will, um, it will be for the American people to decide who they want to elect into office. And we will work with whoever's elected into office, as you would expect. Um, that is what I mean about sort of maturity and leadership, um, not just within Europe, but uh, more widely, uh, and, and of course with the US. And the special relationship that is there between the US and the UK was forged in the most difficult of circumstances, has endured a very long time, um, and we are committed to it. I discussed that. I've expressed my commitment to President Biden. I spoke to President Trump um, on um, Sunday evening after the assassination attempt, where, again, the special relationship featured in our discussion. Thank you, Beth. I've got uh, Kieran, I think, from The Guardian. Kieran. Thank you, Kieran. Stacey from The Guardian. You spoke today to the Albanian Prime Minister about their deal with Italy to process asylum claims uh, on Italy's behalf. 
Could such an offshore processing deal work for the UK? Well, I've always said I'll look at what works, but the focus today has predominantly been about the work we need to do on taking down the gangs. And obviously, um, Albania and Italy um, co-chaired the working group on migration today. And that was predominantly and dominated by the work that we need to do, sharing intelligence, taking down the gangs, and, and, and this sense that the focus has to be on that aspect if we're going to make um, progress. And the sense actually out of the group that this is not a, a left-right divide, it's actually um, a really important pragmatic set of arrangements that we need to put in place with our European partners. And I felt there was a real sense of progress um, over the course of the day in relation to those discussions. Thank you, Kieran. I've got David from the Daily Mail. David. Uh, thanks, Prime Minister. Um, you didn't seem to categorically rule out there the uh, prospect of off offshore processing centres in the future. Is that, are you, can you categorically rule it out um, as part of your solution in the future? And um, during your bilat with uh, President Macron later, uh, will you discuss the possibility of a returns deal and, and, and what might that look like? Would it be just a, a bilateral deal with France? Or would it be with the whole EU, and would you be willing to accept a share of migrants being sent here by the EU as, as part of any deal? Yeah. Uh, well, look, in relation to the agreement between Albania and Italy, um, obviously there's interest in how that might work, but that wasn't actually the central discussion in the task force in the roundtable that we had. It was, it was about the practical measures that... Um, we want to discuss, which is about how we deal with taking the gangs down in the first place. But look, I'm a practical person. I'm a pragmatist. And I've always said, we'll look at what works and uh, where cases can be processed closer to origin, um, then that is something which, of course, ought to be looked at. But I do, I mean, the reason I'm putting it in this way is because the emphasis today was very much on the practicalities of dealing with the gangs in the first place. And that's where the second part of your question is answered as well. The, the returns agreement only comes into being um, uh, at the end of the process. And um, my focus is at the beginning of the process to make sure we actually secure our borders because the problem we've got at the moment is we've got tens of thousands of uh, people who are here who shouldn't be here who aren't being processed. Um, that is not a sensible policy on any uh, uh, you know, uh, approach. Um, and as for a returns agreement, I've always said we're not going to be part of the EU scheme. Um, that is for EU members. We're not an EU member. We've never wanted to or asked or sought to be part of that scheme. We're not going to be part of that um, scheme. Thank you very much. I've got George from the FT. George. Yes, uh, Prime Minister. Um, can I ask you about the economy? You spoke about the, your desire to have closer trade ties with the European Union. I just wondered if there's anything you've heard here today or in the last two weeks in the talks you and your colleagues have had with your European counterparts to encourage you to be more ambitious about what you're seeking and when talks on the economy might begin. And since everyone else is asking two questions... <laughs> I knew this would happen. I should have stopped it with Nick in the first one. Well, I, think, I, think, I think it's quite an important one. You mentioned the tragedy of the English Channel on Wednesday. The fact that some of the migrants were picked up by a British boat and then returned to Calais, I think that's quite unusual, isn't it? Is that significant? And does that show some new spirit of cooperation on this issue? Um, well, let me... I mean, on the economy, uh, look, I've been pretty explicit here and previously that we want to seek a reset with our relationship with Europe. Um, I said that in my opening remarks here. I've said it... Um, before the election and since the election. And uh, the impression I get is that there's a real appetite for that. You will all have probably spoken to some of the other leaders who've been in the meetings with us today, so you will form your own view. But uh, the appetite, I think, is for um, a UK which is, as it were, back on the um, international scene, playing a leading part with maturity and with a different stance um, in relation to our relations with Europe, both inside the EU and beyond. And yes, we do want to get a better deal than the deal that we've got at the moment. Uh, we understand the challenge and constraints of uh, any discussion. Of course we do. But I do think there's um, a closer relationship to be had that um, includes trade, that includes um, education and research, um, and includes security. 
Um, and, um, you know, that is partly what we mean by the reset. I think that's understood by um, our partners and colleagues here. And my strong impression is that uh, we've been able to make some real progress today. But as I say, you will have, you've interviewed some of them on the way out. I haven't, so you'll have formed your own view in relation to that. Um, on the question of the operation um, that you referred to, yes, it is, that, that was an operation that took people back to France. That's really an operational decision for those that are carrying out the exercise um, and I, I think is done on a sort of um, operation by operation basis. There's no change of policy in relation to that. Thank you, George. I've got um, Madeline from Develop, I think. Hi, yeah. thank you, Prime Minister. Madeline Rulkowski, Die Welt. Europe is talking about building a stronger security architecture and the UK wants to play a bigger role in that. What would that mean for the UK's nuclear deterrent? A German government official suggested that the UK could contribute to a European nuclear shield in case NATO skeptic Donald Trump gets elected. Is that something you would consider? Well, thank you for raising that. I mean, the first thing I should say is that we are committed to the nuclear deterrent and I've been very clear that that includes all of the necessary upgrades um, that uh, are there to keep the capability in place. That was something I was able to make clear in NATO last week in Washington and touched on uh, on occasion today. I do think that uh, this is more NATO really than EPC, that uh, the UK does make a, a unique and really important contribution, particularly in Europe, when it comes to security um, because of the nuclear element. But because actually we stand full square on NATO, we were, as a Labour government, proud signatories to the original NATO treaty, um, which is in Brussels at NATO headquarters with the signature of um, our Secretary of State on it. And we are as committed today, it's an unshakable commitment to NATO. My own personal assessment is that NATO is um, as important, if not more important today than it's been for many years. And so that's where we stand on that question. Thank you. We've got Oliver from The Times. Oliver. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Just following up on Beth's question, both Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have been very clear and expressed extreme scepticism about continued American support for Ukraine. Without preempting the election result, what is your message to them from this summit? And also, if I may, two weeks ago you were in Camden casting your vote in the general election. Uh, now you're hosting world leaders at Brennan. That's been a bit of a whirlwind. On a human level, how strange has it been? Um, but, uh, look, I'm not going to preempt what may happen, but look, the stance we take is important. The stance that we took in Washington at the NATO conference mattered because it was intended to show uh, to Russia in particular, in particular, the resolve last week of the NATO countries, um, a bigger NATO, a stronger NATO, a NATO with increased resolve to stand up to Russian aggression. That was then repeated today. That, that matters as a signal, as a stance. Um, and what we're able to do both last week and this week is to make clear that is in relation to Russian aggression uh, in relation to Ukraine, of course, but also Russian aggression in other forms that pretty well all of the countries representing represented here have experienced in relation to misinformation, cyber, um, you name it, um, and Moldova, of course. Um, you know, so it's very, very important um, that that stance is seen not just as a reflection of current mood, which it is, but also as a signal to Russia of our resolve. Um, look, in relation to um, the situation, Camden is a fine place, and I was very proud to cast my vote uh, in Camden. Um, but look, we've worked really hard to get into a position to win an election. We've spent 14 years in opposition, arguing about what ought to happen, what must happen. Um, now we get the chance to actually deliver for the country. I hope that in the last two weeks, I've been able to at least give the sense of how we intend to go about that task as a, a task of service, um, a government of service, 
um, serving those that voted for us and those that didn't vote for us, um, and a government that says it's country first, party second, and therefore no more gimmicks, no more party policy sort of masquerading uh, as a serious answer to a question, but driven by service. And to reset on the international stage alongside that, so the national, the sense of a government of service, but then the international stage as well to, um, you know, cement some of the relationships which we've been building in opposition. Uh, many of the meetings I've had today were not meetings for the first time, but they are take on a different character. Uh, that's something that uh, I came into politics to do. Um, I came into politics late in life. I didn't come in to sit on the opposition benches, voting and losing every night. Um, I've tried that, didn't like it very much. Uh, it is much better to be able to deliver um, on uh, the change that I think is desperately needed across our country. Thank you very much. Um, and Tonella, uh, Antonella. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, your predecessor, Rishi uh, Sunak, built up a special relationship with Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni. Are you going to have the same close, the same very close and friendly relations with uh, her and why? And secondly, if I may, as he, he was here, what do you think of the appeasing behaviour of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban towards Russia? Did you discuss with, with that? Um, did you discuss that with him to, today? Thank you. Uh, look, in relation to my predecessor, firstly, can I say something which you didn't ask, but I do think it's important. I think he's been incredibly statesmanlike and generous since the election, if I may say so. And I thought he uh, uh, you know, made that very clear in the way that he replied to the King's speech yesterday. Um, the relationship that he struck up with Italy was important. I think we've got a long history between our two countries. Um, and we've both had the opportunity today to make clear that we want to continue with that strength of relationship between the UK and Italy. That is a good thing. Um, and so we build on the relationship that Rishi Sunak um, put in place um, rather than start in a different place. And I think that's been an important part of the discussions I've been able to have here um, today. Uh, as for the discussions I've had with individual uh, leaders, then um, I'm not going to start um, going into the details of those, as you would imagine. Um, part of the purpose of these meetings is to have the opportunity to discuss issues of mutual concern with uh, leaders of, in this case, 46 uh, European countries or entities. Uh, and that's been um, very good from our point of view. It's been a very successful um, session today of the EPC. I'm very pleased that we've been able to host it and to be able to host it here uh, in this splendid place um, with the weather, which we can't take the credit for, has added to the real sense that um, Britain is back on the world stage. And I'm really pleased that most of the leaders, if not all of them, are leaving here um, with a sense of renewed confidence in their relationship with the UK, with a real understanding of what we mean by uh, a reset, um, and I think looking forward to deepening the bilateral relations that we have with all of them. That's been very much a theme of, uh, of today. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.